So as soon as I see this question, I know the topic. It's definitely going to involve um, the number of solutions for an X squared situation. I have a whole lesson on that, right? So we have an X squared right here. We are asked to meet with another equation at one point. So um, the one big thing we can do here is the discriminant. The thing that complicates that is we can't just plug these values into the discriminant because we need to figure out this, this C. So we would have to merge the equations. I'll show you how to do that. We could also realize that if Y equals C is a horizontal line, then this parabola is going to hit that point, hit that line once at the vertex. The vertex is very special. But if that line were tilted, if it had a slope, then this wouldn't really work. So we could do the vertex as well. Honestly, though, I've got four answer choices. It's not like C could be anything. So I'm just going to Desmos this thing and guess and check, and that's that. So let's do it, right? So what would I do? Well, first, I want to type this initial equation, this, um, this quadratic, right? So Y is equal to negative X squared plus 9X minus 100. So I get some sort of parabola somewhere, I guess. Here it is. Um, and now if I do Y equals C, I get... Ooh, interesting. I don't know why it does this sometimes. It thinks for whatever reason C is an X here. I don't want that. So if you do this, you're going to have a little bit of a problem. I want C to be some sort of number. So I'm just going to force a slider and now it gets horizontal. I don't know why it does that. It's just odd to me. Um, but oops, I want to just zoom normal. There we go. Um, so now let's change the C to these different things. So let's try A. So negative 481 divided by Four. Nope, that clearly has two solutions, right? Hits twice. That's what we're asking for, right? These things are intersecting. We're not looking at X intercepts for this quadratic because the quadratic has none. We can see it, but they're asking for the number of solutions to the system. And even though one of the equations in the system is very simple, it's now these things are merged. So yeah, so that gets rid of A. Anyway, uh, let's do um, negative 100. Nope, still two solutions. Let's do, oh, did that go away? Oh, I'm going to tap. Uh, 319 divided by 4. Looks pretty good, right? I can zoom in and double check, but that looks like the, the red parabola is hitting the blue line just once. Seems pretty good. Let's just try negative 9 halves, because if it's really bad, then we know the answer. And it's really bad. It's all the way up there. No solutions at all. So that's it. Done. Uh, to me, again, this is a great example of a concept that is hard and tedious in other respects, but here isn't so bad because we have the ability to guess and check. So take advantage of those opportunities. I will show you what to do the long way because if they took away the answer choices here, negative 319 over 4 is such a bizarre number. We would never use a slider to guess and check that randomly, right? Like it, it's so weird. So we'd have to do it the longer way then. And maybe the SAT will, can, will try to do that when they want to up the difficulty of a question. Just take the answer choices away, and then you can't guess and check. But if, if they leave them, take that opportunity. You know, it's a huge win. Um, so what could we do? Well, like I said, we could do the vertex method. So let's, let's start with that. Uh, the vertex, right, we saw it visually when we had these two things match up, is the vertex is the only way for a horizontal line and a parabola to meet just once. So if we find the vertex, we can use um, we can use some plug points and equations a little bit to do it. So the vertex of the starting quadratic is going to be h. The, the x coordinate is negative b over two a. So that's going to be negative nine over two times negative one. So that is positive nine halves. But we need the y coordinate, right? Because that's what the c corresponds to. So we got to go back to the equation. Here's probably where I'd use my calculator, but I'll just show you what you're doing. Negative nine halves squared plus nine times nine halves minus 100, right? So this is negative 81 over four. That negative is not squared, so it stays outside. Plus 81 over two minus 100. And here, I'll do this in Desmos to show you. Because at that point, that's what I would do. So uh, negative 81, I can use this, divided by four plus 81 halves minus 100. And it gives you it as a decimal, but remember, you can tap the, the right underneath the 4 there. You've got the little fraction button, and it'll do it, negative 319 over 4, which is what we got. So that, that's one method you can use. But again, that doesn't always work because it, it, here it really has to do with the fact that it's a horizontal line. If that line had a slope, it's not going to work. 
So we can't use the vertex in those cases, but we can always use the discriminant b squared minus 4ac. We want it to meet at exactly one point, so it has to equal zero. The problem is we can't just use this equation. We've got to merge them. So we have to put that c in for y. But when we do that, we also have to then rearrange it so that it's equal to zero again because the discriminant really only works when it's equal to zero. So I have to subtract the c, which gets kind of weird because then I have zero equals negative x squared plus nine x minus 100 minus c. So what, what's the problem here? Well, this, the, when I plug into b squared minus 4ac, the c that I'm plugging in is not the c that I have right here. This is why this is a hard question, is if we do it the traditional way, it's, it's a mess. So b is nine, so let's do nine squared minus four, a is negative one. And so the C term is everything that has no X on it. So it's the whole negative 100 minus C, and that is equal to zero. So we got to clean this up. So 9 squared is 81. Uh, let's get rid of these. So that's a plus 4 times negative 100 minus C. So 81 plus, or now it's minus, um, minus 400 minus 4C is equal to zero. Let's add this over and combine like terms. So 81 minus 400 is negative 319. That's looking familiar. Equals 4C divide by 4 divide by 4 and C is negative 319 over 4. I think that's the worst way to do it. That's the worst because because there's just so many places to mess up. I mean, I guess with the answer choices, it's not so bad because if we lost a negative, we'd still probably be like, okay, I lost a negative somewhere. It's 319 over 4. But if we didn't have answer choices, we wouldn't know that kind of stuff. So we, we have a lot of opportunities with that discriminant method to make a mistake that just we don't catch. Uh, so I don't love it. But if, you know, like I said, if, it, if we don't have the answer choices and it's not that we can use the vertex, we have no choice. We're going to have to do this discriminant thing. And there have been questions in the SAT like this, where this we're merging a parabola with some sort of line and the constant is kind of like, messy within all that. And we just got to be careful that we understand there's a difference between a letter that they give us and the letter that we use in a formula to kind of represent something. So the C in the discriminant formula represents whatever term in this quadratic has no X's attached. It, that might be multiple numbers if one of those numbers is a constant that we don't know and we have to kind of keep it as a variable for a little bit. So it's frustrating, but this is a good example of a topic I'd also want you to get right because we know it's going to come up. They love this. Every SAT is going to have one of these. So it doesn't, it's going to look different every time, but the process to solve is pretty much the same. Sometimes we're going to have a lot of options like we did here, but even if not, the discriminant will always work. So make sure you know how to use that.